The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Hi everybody, it's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? I got to tell you um, that these new promos that Leo is making are like above and beyond. So I want to first and foremost give a shout out to my buddy Leo who makes all these amazing promos and does all this great stuff. Uh, who? Okay. Dee has joined us right away, although Danielle's going to be our guest tonight. I'm so excited. How can it not be amazing? So Danielle says, hi, Maria and Leo. Happy Tuesday. Couldn't miss my first comment. Hey, everybody, thanks for coming. Yes, Danielle is usually the first one, although last week, whoa, Mandar. I don't know how he slid in there. A little competition in there. I like that. Uh, Yes. Look at Mandar. He was said, Mandar, you were second tonight. Last week, he slid in. He was like, first, uh, Andy Plasky, our beautiful Andy Plasky Andy. has returned. Happy Tuesday. Happy spring. Yes. And we are going to celebrate all that. Lynn Dorman. Hi, Daniela Maria. Hi, Lynn. I don't know if I know Lynn. How nice to see you. Dominic Pupa. I'm here for the news. Yay. Oh, Dominic, you know what? You know, Dominic has his own podcast. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard a spell. Yeah. So, uh, Fixing Famous People, I think it's called. I, I missed I, that voice. I know. I'm very excited about it. So, uh, we'll have to talk to Dominic about that. Maybe we'll have him come on soon and tell us about that. Um, I hope so. And uh, so, okay, Lynn and Danielle probably know each other, which is wonderful. Then, of course, hopefully we'll have Lynn Fortis come in. Although, I think she's at the um, Solo Festival, United Solo Festival tonight. Mm-hmm. She has been working um, with Stephanie Egan. And uh, Wendy, our beautiful uh, Wendy Lane Lane Bailey. Bailey. Yep, they've been working uh, around the clock there. You know, Wendy Lane is the big cheese over there. Putting on a theater, I mean, putting on a show individually is monstrous, to say the least. Right. And to put on many shows all together. But, you know, I've festivals, she's right. When Wendy Lane was talking about, She's great, isn't the she group, great? She's so like, energetic. I love that hair. I love her so hair. She's so smart. Oh my man. god, she is smart as a whip. When you put those groups together, you know I've been part of the American. American College Theater Festival, which takes theater groups from. junior colleges and colleges i've been to uh international festivals performing in cyprus and in egypt and in ireland and when you get these groups together of artists from different places telling different stories like your women's group right, right. Group, you know it's just such that group saved my butt during it, covid it, it's such a great way to you know i had to you know there was a, a little romance i had in egypt uh, very, Leo. very, yeah, very quietly. Nothing, nothing risque or anything like that. But there was a very nice dancer uh, from another country. We barely could speak each other's languages, and we were hanging out for a night in Egypt. That's, in the, well, that's what they mean by showmances. I always loved that. I mean, yeah. there is so you know they say that, and uh, Danielle will be able to really uh, elaborate on this if she wants to go to this place, but. They say that the chakra for creativity and the chakra for intimacy is the same one or for relationships. So, I, you know, I wonder if it is if it is something like that. I think we talked about that. <gasps> there she is. There's Hi, our guys. beautiful Danielle. Hi, honey. <laughs> hey, guys. How you doing? Hi, oh, good to see you. 
So Danielle, since you're here with us now, what, is there any truth to that? Yes, there is. So that would be the sacral chakra. It's about two to three fingers below somebody's belly button. Mm -hmm. And ideally it glows orange and it is the chakra for creativity and sexuality. Wow. Yes, I think I, I saw that once. I Somebody had some kind of a, a diagram and uh, I remember thinking, wow, isn't that interesting? And I wonder if that is the reason why people, when they're creating together, sometimes fall in love, you know, when they're whatever they're doing or working on show, you know, as they say, showmances, that happens quite often. Mm -hmm. For sure. The weather yeah. girl's here. Weather girl, my cousin Rena Crignali Berge from Massachusetts has joined us. Hello and happy spring. Yes, how wonderful. Andy says, oh, Leo, you international James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. John Sabino, my cousin John John. That is my mother. My, my mother and his dad were brother and sister, our brother and sister. They're just in heaven now. Uh, how do you get, um, how do you get, how can after you get June after, Tuesday. oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know. There's a the, mist, the mysteries of the world uh, surround us, John, John. But tonight's show, okay, so let's, let's get this going. Hold on a second. So we want to welcome you to our show, everybody out there. Love you all. I love you, too. I wish you guys could meet my cousin, John, John. He's just the most adorable guy and fabulous and just takes care of everyone in the family. He's that guy. He's that guy that shows up on Sunday mornings and takes my dad food shopping and shows up and brings you sandwiches. And he's just that guy. Uh, the good anyway, guy. These are, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's a good guy for sure. So uh, we want to welcome everybody to our show. We meet here every Tuesday night from 9 to 10. And uh, we usually interview creative people and uh, talk about different things that they're working on. Our guest tonight has been on the show before, and she is a reoccurring guest. And she also was one of our people that uh, always types in. She is creative, very, very creative. She is also um, has a million gifts. So we wanted to bring her on because Danielle and I were talking on the phone a few weeks ago. And um, I just feel like we need a little Danielle right now. <laughs> we need a little. And it's and she chose. I let her choose the date and not even knowing that. What is today, Danielle? Today is Astrological New Year. Yesterday was Equinox. And so today is the New Year because it's the first day of Aries season. Wow. And Aries would be, uh, I mean, I, I, I knew it only because I had, I knew some things like that, but Aries is the first sign of the cycle, right? Yes, it's the first sign of the zodiac. And the reason why it's New Year is because it is when we actually reach a full rotation around the sun. So uh, New Year wow. was changed to be in January uh, in Roman times. But prior to that, equinox and astrological New Year were the most holy days of the year. Really? Now, why would they, why do you think those Romans, those pesky Romans changed it? <laughs> Romans are separate from Italians in a lot of instances, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was being, you know, a little funny, but I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they're just bossy and they wanted it their way. Which, yeah. So you know. actually a lot of... Um, a lot of the holiday and a lot of the way that we have the months situated does stem from Roman things. A lot of the months are named based on uh, Latin names, um, but they they switched it more so when they kind of cycled into Christianity. Uh, originally in Rome, this time was also celebrated for the god Mars. And it's interesting because Mars also rules over Tuesdays as a day of the week. What? <laughs> Yeah, so you were working with Mars when you chose today for, for your shows, whenever you assigned it today. Oh, and my Mars God. Mars rules over most of March because uh, Mars is the sign, uh, the planet that rules the sign of Aries. Who the hell knew? I guess Danielle knew. And March <laughs> is hot, right? Oh, my yeah. God. Chauncey, Mr. March. I was with him last night. I, I was laughing and laughing and laughing. He was so funny. He's so cute. We love Chauncey Dandridge. Um, so he is Mr. March. He's still very excited about that. I, I had to show up, take the calendar out. This is our calendar, by the way, our nothing but the and apron calendar. He is Aries as well, isn't he? Yeah, well, tomorrow's his birthday, so yes, yep. he would be. Yeah. 
He, he would be a cuspy, actually. So okay. when you're within a couple days of a sign switch, you're referred to as a cuspy. So you can right. have traits of the sign that you're born in and the previous sign. Interesting. So he's a cuspy. I'm going to remind him of that. I'll, <laughs> I'll see him tomorrow night. I'm going to bring him a cupcake. Oh. Because I work at the duplex tomorrow night and he works at Stonewall. You tell him I said he is a little cupcake. A little I know. Happy <laughs> Happy, I will. I will tell him. He'll be very psyched to hear that. Sometimes he pops on. He is working tonight, but sometimes he pops on. Oh, I'm lagging on my comments. Okay, so now, Danielle, would you say that this, um, so this is the beginning. This is a good time for most people to do what? Because I know different so, times of the year are good for different things. Yeah, so this is actually a great time to give yourself a new start. Um, we have multiple New Year's that you can celebrate and tap into actually throughout the year. But for the majority of the world, this is kind of the second to last one. So mm. we start with the collective New Year in January, then around February, um, we usually have the Chinese Lunar New Year, which we're in the year of the rabbit this year. And rabbit's also significant to now, which I'll talk about in a second. But then after the Chinese New Year, um, we go into this time, the astrological new year and then kind of the last majorly celebrated new year in my experience is then the jewish new year which is around um september rosh hashanah holidays right right well i kind of like that there's all these different new years because mm -hmm. it gives different groups a chance to 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 honor whatever their culture is but it also for me i love different cultures so i'm always so interested and, and why people do what they do. And, you know, when we had Tom Chu on, remember, for Lunar U New Year? Man, did he give us so much great information that I wouldn't have known. So that's just really, I love all this stuff. And uh, yeah. so, okay. So we've been talking a lot um, just because I love what you do. I think it's just phenomenal. I think you're just a lovely human being. And we could always use more lovely human beings in the world. And I had a, uh, I talk about this all the time, but I had an amazing session with Danielle a few months ago, and it really, like, shifted so much uh, uh, of my life. Like, it, it really, it's almost like I felt tipped and emptied out of the bad stuff, and I was able to, to replenish with good things. So, I can't not, this is just coming straight from personal experience. I had a session with Danielle. The session I particularly had was called the Quantum Session. I can't say enough about it. Uh, if you were someone that is interested in uh, Danielle channels the other side, and if you're interested in that, which I really was, and I know Rena and Ziana got them a session. They loved it. Judy got a session. She loved it. Um, my cousin Rosa Abandanza got a session, and she loved it. Um, and I, I um, hopefully my sister will. I know she's traveling this week, but we'll, so a lot of my friends now have gotten sessions with you, Danielle. And, um, you know, uh, one of the things that you said was that we were talking the other day and you said people come through all the time. So when people come through to you, is it just when you're doing a session or is it like you could just randomly be home doing something else and someone is trying to communicate with you? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's all the time. It was more frequent. Honestly, I grew up in an Italian family that did not understand or condone the concept of boundaries. <laughs> so, oh, that. <laughs> so I was ingrained that boundaries were bad. And um, that carried over actually to my relationship with my gift and with spirit. And so I didn't have boundaries with the other side either. Ooh, so I would end up getting visits all the time, just nonstop and be drained because I would be working in my waking state and in my sleeping state. But a lot of the time, especially in my earlier life for spirits that would just, I would never really connect with people here. I would be crossing them over or helping them understand something uh, and things like that. So uh, I do connect with spirit and I also connect with people's energy fields and their spirit guide teams. So I can see things about them that don't necessarily have to come from a loved one in spirit. So now that I have better boundaries, it's easier to uh, notice someone uh, that's there in spirit or notice an energy or a message for someone and then also respect myself and the other person to see whether it's an appropriate 
uh, time to give the message and also always ask for consent um, before diving into someone's energy. Wow, that's fascinating. Um, so if, if people have never heard of anything like this, this is a, a Danielle is an amazing place to to learn because Danielle is not, I mean, because I've, I've always loved this stuff and I've read a lot and I've gone to see a lot of different, you know, people on stage, you know, like James Van Prague and George Anderson and read tons and tons of books. And I love this stuff. But I have to say that the way that you explain it and approach it, um, it is just, is a very gentle way of doing it. Uh, it's, you, there's a lot of kindness to the way that you do it. I think that people in general are fra- like we're more fragile than we would ever admit. Men and women, it's not just women, right? And it's, especially when it comes to people that we've lost, I think we're so fragile. You know, we want to so badly connect. So I want to thank you for the way that you approach things in, in such a respectful way. So thank uh, you, and thank you, and Leo, you guys have been so kind and always shouting me out and sharing the links so that people could find me easily. I really. I love and appreciate you guys so much. Well, thank you. You know what? Here's my thing. I want people to be happy. Like, I would, if I could just make everybody happy, that would be like the greatest thing in, in the world. So how can I, can't, you can't make everybody happy, but you can be nice to people. But then when, when I met you, I was like, oh, this was something that lifted so much sadness off of my heart. I would love to pass that on to someone else. So, and Leo, I know you feel the same way, and you, you're you very spiritual. Danielle is part of the family, just you know, coming in and typing in already. She just <laughs> I part know. of the group. Mandar is the very bad, fresh cousin. That's who Mandar <laughs> is. You, okay, this, okay, great. So now Mandar has asked a very valid question. What is the difference between a spirit and a ghost? Is there one? So all ghosts are spirits, but not all spirits are ghosts because ghost is more identified with energies uh, that have remained attached to the level of consciousness that they were previous to passing over. So sometimes energies get stuck or choose of their own volition to stay stuck because they're afraid to pass over to the other side. They uh, are not sure what their beliefs are. They're not sure if they'll be punished. Uh, And sometimes actually they feel like it's such a transition for them to leave the body. Then they're viewing their friends and family members and they don't know if they'll still be able to do that if they cross to the other side. So I would identify a ghost as an energy that is kind of stuck or choosing to stay attached to more closely related to our plane of existence. Wow, so I would say that then a ghost would be more fearful of leaving. It's almost like they're afraid to make the wrong decision. Yeah, sometimes. And so that's where I was talking about earlier. Sometimes I never connect it with a person in the physical. Sometimes they try to get me their family's information if they would be open to that. But um, a lot of times they want comfort for someone like myself who's able to kind of exist on both sides of life because of my gift and be able to either walk them to the other side or give them comfort in explaining what it's like or what it could be like for them. Wow. Okay, so Rena says... Danielle, are you able to connect with your your friends and loved ones or only when they come to you? Yes. So, first of all, hi, Rena and Ziana. Yeah. I had a good talk with Ziana. I talked to Ziana today. She, was, she loves you. <laughs> I love her. And she calls me Bella, which I don't oh. hear from many people anymore. So... <laughs> But yes, I can connect with my friends and loved ones. Um, A lot of, I mean, it is their choice still. So you can call someone and they're busy. They don't want to show up. Um, And also I've helped a lot of my friends and loved ones. I crossed some of my loved ones over. Um, I have friends and loved ones from alternate lives that still visit me because I'm alive again, if you believe in that. And um It is it is more difficult, though, because for anyone, including myself, grief is an extra veil upon us between us and the other side. So if you're someone who's still very stuck in your grief, it could be more difficult to have clear communication with a loved one on the other side, uh, even if you're considered yourself a medium. So uh, 
depending on how soon the person has passed or if I'm dealing with a moment or gr of grief or anger about someone that has left this world, even if I knew them, it could be more difficult to connect with my own people at certain times than it is to connect with uh, a client who I don't have that emotional barrier for. Wow. Now, I had a particular question because you and I talked about this a little bit. And uh, yeah. so addiction, because addiction is a, 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 a sad reality. And, you know, a lot of my friends I know that have passed like uh, just in the last man, in like the last seven years, some of them, the, sadly, there was a lot of addiction involved. And I personally am in recovery. So there's no judgment whatsoever. Right. I feel like I literally like dodged a bullet. Like I, I could have gone either way, and I, I'm so grateful that I'm here. So, we talked about that, and you know, so can you shed some light on that? Yeah. So it's interesting. We also spoke about how the founder or the writer behind uh, AA, uh, I believe Bill Wilson. Um, yeah. yeah. So he was in a group prior to creating AA. He was in a Christian meditation group called the Oxford Group. Yep. Yep. And that opened him up to a lot of information of God outside of the spectrum of classified or church type religion. And uh, it's believed that he learned in that process to channel whether he was comfortable referring to that or not as channeling. Um, and he... I believe, and from how he's described it, channeled those 12 steps. Um, Absolutely. I yeah. couldn't agree more. Yeah. So that is channeled information. A lot of people get uncomfortable uh, with that term. And actually, Bill Wilson's name has been kind of blacklisted among some Christian groups because of how he left the Oxford group. And uh, it's said that he channeled it from evil spirits. From Well, that's Christian open minded and Christian love there. For yeah, that, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of Christians, unfortunately, who feel the need to classify anything that's not canon, which canon is controlled. That was controlled by Rome. But they feel the need to classify anything that's not canon as evil. And in my opinion, it just kind of crowds out the full spectrum of God. So it's sad to me. I um, couldn't agree with you more. And you know, like, uh, it's true that we only use 10% of our brains in most humans. You probably use like a ton, 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 ton more <laughs> than anybody I know. But um, so w who's to say that we can't do things like that? You know, like... I, as a person that has, feels like Bill W. has directly saved my life, you know, like I never met the guy, I never, but his writings and because of AA and all that, uh, I, I do feel that it was channeled because when you do read that stuff and when you, like, how does it work, how it works where we all like just sit in a room or share with each other and there's just such beauty and truth in that, you know, like, so now are there souls that are are so burdened that that you know what do you do with that what do you do with souls that are is that like a have they have to do it over and over in different lives or it can be i mean to be honest with you i travel to the other side i get taken on that that trip um before i understand what that was and so the, I know a lot of people like to believe in the classical interpretation of heaven or hell, but in my experience, there are many different layers above and below, and um, souls continue learning after they die, and sometimes if they're very burdened, they do create their own type of hell. It really does depend on our belief system. God is everything. God can mm. be malleable, uh, in my experience, to anything that that soul needs. And I've never seen a version of God that's really here to punish. There's a system that self-regulates. And we honestly, as souls, punish ourselves for deeds uh, if we've wronged others. So that's the system of karma that's set up. And, um, you know, there are souls, if they pass from something like suicide or if they have a stain uh, of addiction, those things can carry over into other lives and it can also inform their experience on the other side. It depends on the soul. Sometimes they get a very soft, sweet respite and then they know when they come back into life, they'll mm -hmm. reenact certain lessons and some deal with it uh, in their experience on the other side. And some of them do come to me for help with that. No, I staying on the same subject, is there anything we can do as earthlings mm -hmm. 
to help elevate a soul that is saddened or confused or has maybe struggled you know like i read somewhere once that like the more you pray for a soul the more it elevates but i don't know is there truth to that or there is yeah so our prayers do give energy to souls on the other side uh and a lot of burdens of life do lift off the soul as soon as it passes away it but it is the soul's choice to see whether they're going to use that ultimate perspective or whether they're going to still limit themselves a bit to work through some things so uh something else that helps is us working through the issues that we had with the person. So when I do a reading for someone, I will see the other soul become lighter when their burden is lifted because they finally got the message through. They could have been trying through dreams and knocking things over and all kinds of things. And so that helps, you know, that's a form of resolving karma. So that helps elevate a soul as well. Wow. That's interesting. Now, um, uh, I mean, I think Mandar was the one that yeah. said, "Have you ever come across a, a, a soul that was evil or that or frightening?" Yes, I have, and uh, there are ways to ward them off. There are many. It depends what you practice and what you want to believe in. If you want to pray to a certain version of deity for protection in that, some people burn candles or sage or Palo Santo. Um, but it is also about our beliefs and about boundaries again, and what we allow, how close we allow spirits to get to us, and if we allow them on an unconscious or conscious level to drain us in any way. Um, I don't know I have, if it's uh, I don't mean to laugh, but I don't know if it's powerful because I just tell them to get out. Yeah, no, that's I mean, powerful. seriously, I don't, I don't use a camera. I just, get out. This is no place for you here. Yeah, and and, no, and that's scarily powerful. enough, I've had some some things with my car seat, my passenger seat when I drive uh, down certain because uh, I'm on the mountain. So if I have to go down to Palm Springs or whatever, and there are times when there's nothing in my seat, but my thing will go off. Ding, ding, ding. And there's been a moment when I've said, you're not, you cannot hitchhike, get out of my car. Yeah. And it stopped. And I kept driving. And I was yeah. like, yeah, no, I was right. Okay, keep driving. Right. Isn't that yeah, no, that happens. And now, especially also as we have like filters, um, uh, people pick up, the filter will pick up another energy behind them. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it wow. is common. It, it is also because we don't set ownership of our own selves or our own spaces enough and if you don't set ownership then sometimes beings that are passing through uh or spirits that are passing through will say oh well let's have some fun and interact and like leo said that is part of that is part of warding it's taking ownership and choosing what you consent to do you consent to that experience of having them around or or not yeah that wow that's really layered there's a lot sometimes it takes a little bit more like i do space clearings and home clearings and blessings and clear energy attachments off of people um but it's really a particular circumstance in terms of why that energy has chosen to be in your presence and it usually happens because there's some wound that we have that carries a similar frequency um to something that is familiar to that energy so sometimes we could be ignoring survival wounds that we've had or anger issues or something and the soul will, will notice the the energy of that wound within us and say oh let's go hang out with them that looks pretty <laughs> why my cats are the ones that gives me give me the sign if they're both active for some reason and there's nothing really going on that especially when i'm here in the apartment that's when i'm just like all right leave them alone get out of here isn't that You're on your way? Well, and you spoke about Egypt, so cats have long been spiritual protectors, as I'm mm-hmm. sure you know. Hey, these girls came to me, so they, I, you know, I know what they were worth. So I, I yeah, your cats are pretty special, Leo. They mm-hmm. really are. They're mm-hmm. super pretty. Um, okay, so if anybody has any questions, like real questions that you want to ask, you know, please uh, just jump on because we want to be able to help you. In the meantime, can we? show danielle's website so if people mm-hmm. want to get a real session i mean tonight we're just uh, yeah, asking certain questions but you can ask uh, questions and um i could do mini readings as well so if you have a personalized question that you're wondering about and would like to ask you can ask that uh not everything translates as well in a medium like this where you're only texting but we will get you the most information possible through this wow to say so you hear that does anybody out there seriously no not joking around or 
foolishness, Mandar. And, <laughs> and, and he, such and, a clown. And he's so funny. I love him to he's death. He's such a clown. I love him to death. Uh, Mandar, by the way, you looked pretty cute in your uh, little uh, St. Patty's Day outfit. I mean, he was our Indian St. Patrick's Day um, rep. But if anybody has a legitimate question that wa- they want to ask, Maybe we could do like a little, you know. Well, I have a question, actually. Yes. I'd like to know if everybody got home okay. For you. Uh, yeah, for, for 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 me. There's a relative that that I'm asking about. I feel a big door was opened, and um, some of the older relatives definitely helped hold that open until they were ready to fully cross. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh my that. goodness. Oh my goodness. I love Good. that. Let's see. Um let's see what we can get coming through here. That's Jay. Jay. Does Jay ask any question? He says, okay. Thanks, Danielle. Absolutely love this subject. Bill W's words to us the realm of the spirit is broad, roomy, all inclusive, never exclusive or forbidding to those who earnestly seek. It is open, we believe, to all persons. Yes. Yeah. That's right. And that's something are. that religion has sought to siphon, in my opinion and experience. You know, everyone everyone wants to hold the monopoly on that. And it's easier to control people if they believe that they have to go through another source. Something that I love to do with clients and why I study so many different forms of religion is to meet them where they are and help them form their own understandings and connections. So that yeah, it helps to go to someone like me who has perspective that you may not have when you're feeling really deep emotions but you also know that you're your part of your own higher power as well and you can make your own connections too but you know what you just said about studying different religions bill w did that he studied yeah, as know. many as he could he was so interested in it and and jay you know was talking about that as well so he was such a cool guy like you know like when they say oh if you could meet anybody and have dinner with anybody living or passed on who would it be he's like my number one my number one yeah. Um, you know that I would love to sit with him but I feel like I, I have been there with him because I feel like inadvertently he did his teachings did save my life and and I love that he says the God of your understanding whatever that is you know like um, in AA they say that the God of my understanding and that's whatever you think it is and that's what I love about it I think so, one thing, Mich- uh, the one thing I know Danielle and I spent some time talking after our, the last show. And we, I mentioned her. I always thought religion, there, all these religions, the spirituality are on this wheel, and we stop trying to control the wheel and just put all the puzzle pieces together. Muslim, uh, 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 Islam, uh, Buddhism, you know, all of these things together. They all have the answers, and at the heart of them, they're all love. It's all yeah, supposed right. to be the ideal of love. So. I agree, and you know, we just have, I feel like like we all love God. We just have different names for God, whatever that is. The universe, Allah, Buddha, Jesus Christ, whatever your David, you know, whatever your understanding of that is, you just call him a different name. But um, okay, Rena says, Danielle, are there any messages coming through for me that you can share? Okay. Um, just to let people know, the more specific you can get with this style of reading, the easier it is, just because of the format where we're not connecting um, personally. Although, I just gave you really vague, and you hit it right on the head. Yeah. So right. I mean, it, it happened. I mean, you know, it's just a little bit more difficult and maybe time-consuming. So <laughs> just, <laughs> I mean, we could do it, but it's, it's a little easier when it's more specific for this format. Um, but so for Rena, I'm seeing something about beer cozies something about a a marking on a beer cozy and i'm getting information also about work and uh your dad actually also standing by you when you're working late or really hard on the computer like i see you really tight and focused and contracting with work and dad's like standing there poking you in the back saying lighten up a little come on take a break now (laughs) Wow, that's great. You know, Rena and her dad were so connected. They were, and they actually look alike. I think Rena looks a lot like her dad. Yeah. So that's really, uh, oh, really, really cool. You know, sometimes, Danielle, I'll ask you a question. You know, sometimes my mother was my favorite person in the world and just like, oh, I loved her more than anything. But sometimes, you know, she's been gone now almost 14 years, but I feel like she's so far away. 
even though like my love for her is so it, uh, is ever present i have pictures of her everywhere but i feel like she's so far away and does that happen as the longer that they're gone the farther they feel or is that a choice of theirs or honestly it's a, a lot about us sometimes it's something within us that's kind of pushing the feeling of them away but mm. most times when people are feeling that and i'm doing a reading you know i'll get messages of how they've how they've been close and sometimes they'll have me share moments with the person um where the person was alone or thought they were alone and the loved one in spirit will describe it to me so that the, the client can know oh they were there then but i didn't feel them at all so right. a lot of times when you're feeling that i would say work on something within yourself and acknowledge that it's maybe a moment of grief where it's making you feel that illusion of separation oh wow that would make sense it's almost like a protection yeah right yeah and it's the same thing also how the universe works sometimes when we want something really really badly we actually repel it to some degree uh, because mm -hmm. we're so focused on it and we're more focused on the wanting of it or the not having on it on the unconscious levels than the having it and trusting in it wow so rena just said i felt that the other night and looked at the clock and it was a one 11 a.m. and felt my dad telling me to go to bed. There you go. Yeah, and 111 is new beginning. So. Oh my <laughs> God! Look at that chills. Look! 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 <laughs> Woohoo! Wow, that's incredible. Okay, Andy Prasky says, "Can you still hear the voices of the people who have passed?" Yeah, I mean, it depends on two things usually. So it depends on you and whether that is a natural part of your what's called the clairs, uh, the senses, the extra senses to allow that and pick up on it more easily. And it also depends on the spirit. So talking with spirit is another language in itself. It largely uh, circles around symbology. And because that's easier for them to connect. It's, it's also why it's easier for them to connect in dreams, which is a space based on symbols. Mm -hmm. um, but they can use their voice. In my experience, it takes a little bit more energy for them to do that, unless that's the specific uh, person's main aspect of gift. So some people can connect more through smell. Some people can connect more through visual and seeing like a picture in their in their eye. I usually have a combination of, of them. And, um, you know, then it's up to the spirit how they want to use their energy. Same thing as if they want to appear physically they'll probably have to save up energy to do that and be in the right space and time to get a visual uh image through to our reality plane wow so it's work for them too oh yeah it's work so when i do a reading you know i always have a few moments at least where i focus and calm the energy and create a safe space for me and the client and the other side even something like this i create you know kind of a sacred circle so that we're getting truthful information and non-trickster energies of the light and so that i raise my energy a little they usually lower theirs a little and we kind of meet in the middle to, to interact wow. That's fascinating. Uh, Andy said, I've had a spirit talk to me through radio. Oh, yeah. So that's easier for them than just using their voice and us picking up on it. So that would be something right. called EVP or mm -hmm. electric voice phenomenon. Good there was, um, yeah, there were a few movies about it in the late 90s and early 2000s. That white noise was like a famous one. Uh, mm -hmm. And then a lot of people got recorders to, <laughs> to try to do it themselves or if you're like me and you watch uh the discovery channel and right. all the programs all that are on there yeah uh, they always take when they're ghost uh, hunting evps and also a lot of their electro electric magnet electromagnet yeah magnetized equipment that help right the other side gather energy should they want to present themselves right i don't really recommend actually watching those shows very often because you can I know they're horrible. Up, well you can pick up the energy in my experience from that or from the news mm -hmm. like maria and i have talked about depending on how sensitive of a tuner you are and if you put energy boundaries or something like a light filter uh so sometimes like when i used to watch some of those shows out of curiosity to see what other people were doing sometimes the energies would come through to me because they are outside of space and time and mm -hmm. they can see oh this person who's in the show is not paying attention they need to try all these tools to really get 
me to interact mm. with them. But oh, that person watching, they have a gift. I could actually talk to them. So that is so mind blowing because you know I have an aversion to um, like horror movies because I feel like I'm very porous in a way like. I pick up things that are very dark and I don't want them, yeah. you know, and then I can't unsee it, you know, I can't unsee it and then it stays with me. So I don't know if that's just me being a scaredy cat or if that's just, I feel porous when I watch those things, you know, like it's, ugh. It's just yeah, I'm the same way, I don't them. watch them. Yeah, I mean, I told Maria, when I was younger, I was obsessed with horror movies, <laughs> but until I was like maybe 17, because then I was still in a period where when I was younger, I was really hiding or trying to shut down a lot of my gift. My family was encouraging me to shut it down. And the church actually encouraged me to shut it down when I was still a church goer. And I watched horror movies because that wasn't scary to me. I would correct it and say, well, that's, that would be a real thing, but it wouldn't happen like that. It would happen like this. And it compared to <laughs> like the thing, Yeah. And it didn't compare to what I was seeing. So I would make my friends watch the classic horror movie. <laughs> Cause I found them funny. I was like, you're scared by that. You should see what I see. That would yeah. be like Mr. Science Theater 3000, but Danielle style. Yeah. Well, that would be good. We'd I be love that. In the front see, I, I wish I could be one of those people that thinks it's funny. I just get so so spooked and then I can't I mean not the goofy there's some goofy stuff but the, but a lot like I remember watching uh, Blair Witch Project and it stayed with it's still with me and that was probably yeah. 20 years ago yeah. there's certain things I cannot unsee or feel some of those slasher ones I can't do with those but like the one like Exorcist or Amityville Horror those ones really those yeah. would really get my energies up. They're my favorite because I feel like there's a little bit more, maybe more truth to them than of some of the other ones that I've seen. But um, yeah, you know what? You know. I think the best one was I. I did watch. It was more of a thriller, and I. I don't know how you uh, did. You did you see the Sixth Sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did you think there was truth to that? Oh yeah. I mean, in honesty, there's truth to most of them. It really depends on how much the writer is going to research, but that's why I really don't watch them anymore either is right. because some uh, it's increasing the amount of real things that they'll try to put in there and especially now a lot of them also use authentic Latin, authentic kind mm -hmm. of summoning energy things oh, and wow. when you watch something you're giving your consent to whether you would agree to that to be in your reality in some sense. So it's not really worth watching to me. Yeah, I, you know, I, I and this goes to uh, same thing with being around negative people in general yeah. or negative situations. Mm -hmm. Like I cannot do it anymore. I used to be really good at just like shutting down, but I gotta tell you like the, the older I get and the more conscious I get of my well being, the more I, there's certain people I can't be around. I literally have to like get out. Oh, yeah. The more sensitive you become and the more you raise your consciousness, the harder it is to, to tolerate those things because you're literally vibrating at a different level than them. And it's just a teacher for you to say, are you still going to put up with that or are you going mm -hmm. to set boundaries and let people do their own thing and you do your own thing? Right. All right. So, uh, Danielle, what are some of the other things besides the quantum session that I had? What are some of the other things that you offer that that some of the other because i know you do a lot yeah i mean like i said i study every day for over two decades so it's i i have a, a wide range of things that i can do with people and i love to also incorporate kind of mental health things as well to to really help people integrate that so uh, i do offer the quantum session that we're we can connect you with loved ones in spirit and also with your own energy field answer questions like this answer questions about signs uh, that you may have had or uh, patterns one of my favorite things to do is work with people about their patterns and their woundings and help them understand how that might still be sitting in their field. I don't really do um, traditional like psychic things of prediction because I really believe it's more powerful to help mm -hmm. people understand the energy from their past that got them to this point, the energy wow. that they're carrying now, 
and then help them see which of the possible projected futures they actually want and how they can take stock of their energy to go towards and build more of those futures. I believe we have free will for a reason. We're and in control, that, right, Danielle? We yeah. have control of what are those choices are going to say. If you give us one answer yeah. and then we're like, well, she told me this and I was, I thought I was, no, because you, you, something you may have done in that moment or time or choices you made may change your course of, of life. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I find it more respectful to, to help people. I know sometimes people want the answers of predictions because they actually want someone else to decide for them. Right. But I love to help people see how to decide for themselves. Yeah, I don't want to know. Like, I, I, I never have specific, I you know, I had a message I wanted to get. Like, when I had my session with you, I had a message I wanted to send my mom, mm. uh, which was a good thing. You know, I wanted to tell her that I had done something that she had asked me to do. And that... Yeah. I just wanted to make sure she knew. So that was like more for me. But I, I'm always that person. I don't want to know. Like I want my life to be organic. Like I'm swimming in a river. Like I just, I don't know what, I just I will keep swimming. Yeah. And I trust God and I trust that, that I, I, I'm coming from a good place and good things will happen if I work hard. Yeah. You know, and then the more you can understand about what's going on that you may not be always consciously paying attention to, the more that can help. So I also do things like a, what's called Akashic Records readings, where we can tap into um, the records of your soul's energy from this and if you believe in, in other lives as well. So yep. it's something, yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was just reading while you were saying that. Uh, Andy Presky had said, a must read, Many Lives, Many Masters by yeah. Brian Weiss. Yes. That's a and great one. I, I read that. I talked to Danielle about it, and she also, it's a great book, folks. Uh, many Lives, Many Masters. And, and so you, you believe Brian Weiss knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I mean, everybody experiences uh, explanations differently, um, but a, a lot of what he says I found to be the case in, in my personal experiences. And uh, that's something I find a lot of value in working in and also helping people understand more accurately because as past lives have become more popular, a lot of people try to attach to this idea of wanting to be, let's say, a famous person. Uh, and in truth, a lot of us can access fractals of people that have become famous and think or try to attach to the fact that we were them. Uh, because when you agree to a life of fame, you agree to become something of an archetype. So mm -hmm. you agree to become a symbol. The same way gods and goddesses were symbols, not that celebrities are gods and goddesses, but it's it becomes something in the public awareness and public consciousness to point the way. So sometimes there are readers um, or people who try to do it for themselves that get confused and see a famous person come through in trying to do something like a, a past life reading, and they'll not take it a step further because sometimes that image comes through to point the way as a symbol and not actually as an answer of who the person was so like a lot of people have identified themselves as cleopatra far too many even if you fractalize something to actually have been her and they forget well that could be trying to show you that you were alive in cleopatra's time or that could be the only symbol you have of, of a female queen Right. Or you, you were actually been, a slave bringing her the water but right you could have been in her court you could have just seen her face because there was some in that life you were so attached to a coin with her face on it you know right. it, it can be different things and the value of past lives to me is never in finding out who you were for you know kicks and giggles but it was it's to find out more about you and the patterns that you still carry the types of soul contracts I do a lot of soul contract work with people and helping them understand understand why we have certain lessons or people in our lives how you can understand those things to end or heal relationships and balance karma and all of that so that we can do more in my further one-on-one -on -one work with people where um, we go beyond sessions and we go into energy healing uh, and life and consciousness coaching okay we're going to take a minute then I, when we come back, I want you to talk about these classes because I, I think you have one coming up, right? Yeah, I have about a, a the animal reading. Yeah, I have a group this Saturday for spirit animal readings. Wow, cool! All right, let's take a minute. We're going to do our what's I mean, uh, what's the story? We're going to do <laughs> our uh, our go ahead, keep eating. All right, so I I always cook on the show. Why do I do it? 
because I like to stay creative. I uh, that's my whole thing. I like to be creative. I can't ask other people to come on and be creative if I do not do that myself. So now I'm back on the keto. You know, I go back and forth. I have a wedding coming up. My friend Scott Ryan's wedding is Sunday in Miami. Uh, I'm working. It's going to be crazy. I'm working at Brandy Saturday night. Then I'm driving to Newark, parking the car, and getting on a plane. Oh, my goodness. I know. And the arena, I'm staying at Cora's house, our cousin Cora, who's amazing. Oh, my goodness. You don't even get any sleep. Listen, I, I'll sleep some other time. I'm going to go to the wedding. <laughs> I'm going to have a ball, and it's going to be great. And then I'll go back and hang out with Cora for two days. Okay, so what did I make? And Cora's a blast. You don't want to sleep around Cora. Okay. <laughs> What did I make? So I know you're a vegan, Danielle. I tried to get his, but I, I am not. That's okay. okay. I did not have any meat or anything, but I went with fish. I hope that's okay. That's okay. So uh, I was like, what? let me try to stay, but I stayed healthy. So what did I make? Look how beautiful this plate is, oh if I say goodness. so myself. Gorgeous. Very, I'm very excited about my plate. Oh, so All right. So yes, thank you, Leo. Oh my goodness, I'm so So angry. this is a flounder. I marinated it in sherry garlic scallions um lobster bouillon and green goddess spices by trader joe's trader joe's makes the best spices and the green goddess is amazing it's got all kinds of good stuff in there and um and then i just kind of poached it not so much uh fried it but kind of poached it in all that deliciousness and then i chopped up some scallions cooked some uh red peppers over that and there's that and then as leo pointed oh, out the brussels sprouts and i cook these with olive oil garlic parmesan cheese oh yes and then you know what i just slightly drizzled on it because i just bought it mike's hot honey do you know mike's Ooh, hot honey wow. yeah, yeah it's good. sweet and it's hot but just a <laughs> tiny bit to give it a little kick and there's some lemon. So that is my healthy, because Danielle came on. I had to cook healthy. When you're not looking, I would eat all of those Brussels sprouts, and then you would not have them. I know. I love Brussels. Isn't it funny They're when we're so kids? so good. Although I always liked vegetables, even when I was a kid. Okay, what did I make for my salad tonight? Mm. I know. Isn't that pretty? Because Danielle was coming on, so I had to make something really pretty. So this is Boston lettuce, because, you know, I'm doing my show in Boston. Uh, coming up in less than two months. It's at the Club Cafe. Uh, on Columbus Avenue. I'm, we're going to post that link. So there it is. Thank you, Leo. So I am doing a show with my sidekick, Lynn Portis, genius. The show is only twenty dollars, but please, may, uh, if you if twenty and ahead, twenty five at the door. But it's really selling quickly. I'm thrilled. But I also want to make sure that you get tickets, my Boston people. Actually, I have people coming from New York too. How cool is that? Right, everybody get tickets if you can travel to Boston because it's also Maria's birthday show. Yes, my birthday is three days later, and so I'm celebrating. I'm going to be 61. I'm not ashamed to say that. I'm very proud of my age. Okay, so what did I make? Boston lettuce, then kale, uh, radicchio, and here are some baby cucumbers, teeny weeny little oh cucumbers. God. I know, which I got to Trader Joe's as well. And then pumpkin seeds, dried cranberries and beautiful gala apples <coughs> how pretty those are pumpkin seeds i love the crunch i know and i think i'm gonna go very simple because there's so much happening just a uh, aceto de modina balsamic uh olive i mean balsamic vinegar from italy and a tuscan herb olive oil that's what mm. i'm gonna do there you go and then for dessert those apples look like they're diving into a pool like they're ready to do well, some that's kind of um, um, Esther Williams yeah, Esther, there we go. Thank you. Yes, they're already. Remember those are the Busby Burke feet? Mm -hmm. Remember those? Yes. Well, I am, was ready to dive in God knows I'm theatrical. So, <laughs> uh, so this is just plain honeydew melon. You cannot go wrong with a delicious honeydew melon. And you can have melon and berries on keto. But I'm telling you, at the wedding, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna eat everything. When I'm at Cora's, I'm going to eat everything. Because she'll probably make Zapoli. All, all right so sweet savory and hot yes andy so andy do you have any questions because you're so knowledgeable about this stuff do you have any specific questions or do you want to ask um as far as someone coming through for you andy yeah people can ask anything yeah i mean if you have a specific anything you feel comfortable 
having other people hear the answer to rather. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is too. You know, I mean, I know hey, <laughs> at this at this point, you know, so many of us have people that have passed on. Um, so go ahead, Andy, if there's something you want to, because he just said yes. If there's something that specifically comes through. I'm sure he's typing right now. I mean, some now I will say maybe you're you're like I'm going to save it for my session with Danielle, which is what I tend to do. My okay, here comes Andy Prosky. My great grandmother is my spirit guide. Okay, so is there Danielle anything that maybe uh, Andy's grandma, great grandmother, would send through? Well, in my experience, uh, if we know a relative in life, they wouldn't be classified as a full spirit guide. Most spirit guides are assigned um, before we're born. And so relatives that are spirit guides are um, usually ones that have passed over before we are born. Uh, what can happen is uh, we can have many spirit guides, we can have temporary spirit guides, and uh, family members can step in as part of the guide team. So some people like to call them spirit guides, some people like to say angels, it really doesn't matter, it just depends on your residence. And that's beautiful that she's directed so much of your life. And it's also a form, in my experience, of ancestral healing, which is another thing that I do and work with people on, because in helping you she's also helping herself and in you guys um working together and in her directing you and helping you take a smoother path it also reverberates through the family line and uh brings a lot of, of healing and light and extra love there so that's beautiful if you have a specific question or a sign maybe that she tried to give you that you don't understand that you would like to ask about i would love to help with that yeah, well, and while Andy's thinking of that, I, uh, oh, my whole career is attributed to my grandmother directing my my great my grandmother directing my life. Yeah. Andy, be specific about that. So, how do you think she directed you? Was did she tell you to go in a certain <coughs> to, into a certain career? I, Andy actually is a director. Okay, she worked in television and film. I feel her every day still. So you feel her still every day. I I feel that way with my grandmother. It's funny, like. Because we talked about this, uh, my grandmother's uh, just like a, a, I still feel like she's around. Actually, I have a picture of her right up there, but my mom feels kind of far away, but my grandmother is around all the time. She's a Yeah, I mean, that's really about us and, and how much grief and guilt we still carry. So as we work on that more, it's easier to feel them usually. And Andy says, I visited her grave when I was down and out. And Andy, would, by doing that, did it give you comfort or... Some people it does, and some people choose never to go because they don't have to be in that place. Uh, in my experience, most spirits are in graveyards when their people are there. Ah. Um, so it, it's not that they're they're stuck there for the most part. Some, if they don't have a lot of family, um, do kind of hang around, and so you'll have randoms <laughs> in graveyards. But uh, <laughs> Wow, so he said he prayed and asked for help at the graveyard within 48 hours my life changed. That's incredible. Beautiful. So you gave her a petition and she answered that call. And so that that's beautiful. You guys both made an agreement and I, I'm sure that when you get to the other side or if you have a session or something, you'll see the ways that you've also blessed her existence the same way that she's blessed yours. Wow. I have a question. Um, so what do you think about cremation versus um, burial? Like, do you think that souls are okay like i know i i personally think it's beautiful like the whole yeah. cremation thing and um do you think that then they are where you where you scatter their ashes or are with you or are they everywhere or what do you how do you feel about that most people actually feel that burning some form and facet of the body body releases um anchorage so uh, if something is um carrying heavy energy let's say sometimes some cultures will actually burn that thing to release uh -huh. the energy attachment uh so this is where we got the in my opinion wrong idea that burning a body means that it does something bad to the soul in my americans have used that part of their tribal uh, uh, uh ceremonies to release the dead right so uh in my opinion i've seen souls of 
burial and of cremation, souls whose bodies were not found, uh, it really doesn't make a difference in terms of their ability to come through. Only if it really meant something to them not to be given a certain type of burial, uh, if their wishes were not respected, then it can make a difference just because of the fact that their wishes were not respected. But it really doesn't make a difference to their energy, whether they were buried or cremated. Interesting. I always... I mean, I, I personally love all of it. Like, I, I personally feel like a soul, once a soul leaves a body, then it's it's detached from the body. But yeah. So it doesn't matter. But I, I always loved when people would scatter ashes, like, somewhere. I t- thought that was so beautiful, you know? Well, it's beautiful because if somebody chose that place, especially, yeah. Uh, yeah. it gives them a point where they can visit more frequently if they want to uh, yeah. and it gives the the people remaining a beautiful place to visit and have contact with them um, that's may not be a personal space so sometimes people are more comfortable trying to have contact in an area that's not necessarily their home yeah now mandor is being silly but it is a valid question d- d- does uh, danielle ever use a ouija board that's not your thing no, it, it can be a real thing, um, yeah, but no. I have I have not used it because I don't need it, but also because it's a it's a portal opening, and um, you know a lot of people I've worked with people that have done that and opened that space because they don't have their personal space open, uh. and it can bring through a lot of trickster energies and things that are just not not great to deal. Now with. there's a phenomenon happening in Colombia. Have you mm-hmm. heard about this? Where they were like. So. 28 young girls, like school girls that were, they were, they, they used this Ouija board over a few months and they all got very, very ill. Yeah. Like very ill, very suddenly unexplained. So they were now, uh, you know, they're saying, I mean, I always was freaked out by it. I remember we used to do it in the basement when we were in high school. We used to, but it always scared me. It always, so it is a thing. It's a thing. It's like opening a door and not closing it or not monitoring who and what comes through so it's not it's not the best thing to do in well, my imagine if those old calling cards we used to have uh back in the day when you used to go da- dial in the number to your phone to get a collect call call home that's what the ouija board reminds me of and yeah. most people have a direct line they don't even need the card right yeah. right <laughs> well you know i mean uh, never use it yeah i don't that kind of stuff spooks me out because i do believe in that, that there's so many options and there's good and there's not so good you know, there's darkness and there's and there's light, but but I, I feel like we keep learning from each other. So, um, do, Leah, would you mind, honey, scrolling Danielle's information again so sure. people can? And you know, do yourself a favor and just go visit Danielle's website. It's really good, and you can see so many different things. And there's a, different price ranges. Uh, and Danielle also, uh, you also make do like a payment thing where people can do it in payments. Yeah, there's a there's a shop pay feature that uses the same kind of program that like Target and the larger retailers use to if anyone wants to break down um, payments or even if they get a larger package, I can make a custom listing and it will help you break down payments to pay in installments. And because of the way it works, you would still be able to get your reading after the first um, payment. Wow. And I can't say enough. And everybody that uh, I know that's gone to Danielle, a lot of uh, my family members, they just love it. And my friends. So, all right, Danielle, what do you want to leave us with on this very special day? Yeah. So, um, and like Marie was saying, I do have a a group reading that's special for this Saturday. Um, It's partially to celebrate my birthday (laughs) that's coming up. Happy birthday! (laughs) And it's also, um, I'm raising some funds for like my family car and some things, so it'll help with that. Uh, Tickets are a special price, but if you want to donate beyond that, that would be helpful. Um, It's this Saturday on Zoom, and uh, tickets are already on my website. It'll take you automatically to a digital download if you purchase, uh, and then you'll have your zoom link and in that we're focusing on spirit animals and how spirit animals can act as guides and teachers for you and actually people can ask a spirit animal about 
anything. I do also offer anytime um, spirit animal medicine mini readings, which happen via recording. I've sent those all around the world and people ask about such a range of things. And it's so funny that the spirit animals always have an answer. And I like them because it also gives someone a guide to continue to work with and continue showing up for them. So that animal or its symbology can continue to give you more answers on that subject after your channeling. So if you're interested in spirit animal work, you might want to join this Saturday, the 25th on Zoom. Tickets are on my website now. And uh, then you could get it or you could get a personal quantum session or any of the other types of sessions. I kind of categorize them into a whole bunch of different things. So you can have a look at my website where there's a contact form. Uh, and there are also links to my podcast on there if you're interested in. I love that out. little podcast. Yeah. I mean, it's so soothing and they're not very long. Like they're they're easily digestible. You know, it's something you can listen to when you're getting ready for work or, you know, sometimes I'm doing fake work or paying bills and I just put it on. And yeah. uh, I find them very, very helpful. But you're so smart, Danielle. You know so many things. It's like, it's not just one thing or it's not just black and white. It's like, you know so many things. I'm like, what the hell? Thank How you. does a person get that smart? I study constantly. I mean, I study with guidance, you know, spirit always leads me to something. And I actually on our mutual friend, Richard Skipper's show, I love uh, him not too. too. Yeah, I love him. He connected us. So we're very grateful. Yes. Um, but actually on his show, he helped me talk to um, Temple Grandin, who was one of his guests, who is a, a leader in the autistic um, spectrum and community. And I connected with her. I've, all, I've been a fan for such a long time because she she talks about building the mental database mm. and how much that helped her with her autistic abilities. That's something spirit has always guided me to do, you know, build that database because spirit connects with me and uses that database to get me to say things more easily to any type of client, you know? And so, so that's why I, I love researching and learning all those things with spirit's guidance. And then it comes together and being able to bring it together in such beautiful ways as a more holistic approach to helping people. Yeah. Wow. Kind of like if you're a Christian out there, she's got the tongue blessing where she can speak <laughs> to many different people and many different languages to get the message of love and healing across. Look at you. You're a good Catholic boy. You know your stuff. Well, you know, Catholic reformed. Yeah. I still believe in it, and I love the music and everything. But I, uh, listen, I love God, and I love the whole. I can't sit in stuff. church and sing anymore like I used to. Yeah. Well, I just you know I feel like if 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 people would just pull out and let God do what God does, let go and let God. Yeah, we, I think it'll be a better world. Just to, and I think most people enjoy their religions and they like to gather in the community that comes with it. And the beauty that comes with it. I loved growing up Catholic. I went to Catholic school. I loved it. I didn't like the the, um, the condescending stuff that came with it and the control. But I was able to separate. I was able to separate it even as a kid. You know, my mother was so spiritual that I kind of just followed what she did. Yeah. So we're going to leave you tonight, folks, uh, by by saying. I'm going to say, and then you, you know, we'll have Leo, then Leo go, and then we'll have Danielle close. But I'm going to say there's so much good in the world. And I feel like the world is shifting, even though there's a lot of bad, but there's shifting in a way that people are starting to be kinder to each other and not click onto that news cycle so much and hate each other, more like we're doing kind things for each other. So I'm going to keep thinking that and putting that into the world because there's so much good so i'm going to focus on the good leo i'm just going to remind people that human beings are not the top of the food chain mother earth is so respect her and get on it all right wow and well i would like to say and take it full circle that remember every day can be a new start you know, in reality, we're today in the start of another new astrological new year. We're taking another collective trip 
around the sun. Uh, and so it's a great day to use that as a reminder to tap into new beginnings for yourself. But the more that you can get to know yourself and get to know what you're carrying and the beliefs that you've been carrying or the limitations that you've been carrying, the easier it can be to step into that moment of now, that moment of new, that moment of innocence and seeing things with childlike innocence so that you can really appreciate them and appreciate the world regardless of hard things that may be going on right now. Most of the things that we stress about are things that we're over exaggerating from our past or worrying about for a future that isn't here yet and doesn't have to be here if we take different ownership of our energy. So remember that you have more power than you think you do and kindness goes a long way not only in helping the other person that you're being kind to but also in elevating yourself and helping you know that you're part of something bigger so thank you all mm. beautiful Yay. all right everybody we are so glad you popped in um i hope that uh that people know that you are loved and appreciated out there and i know that once we post the show the more people will watch it because a lot of our people like i know lynn is working on the united solo and and we'll post the, the show everywhere. But please feel free to share it, to share the information, to share it to your pages. And, um, you know, and contact Danielle. She's amazing. I can't tell, I can't say enough about Danielle. And Leo, I, how much do I love Leo? Mm -hmm. Also, a plug for Leo. Leo does incredible promos, websites, all kinds of things. If you need little shorts done, he does all kinds of advertisement and beautiful work. Um, and yes, Rena says always be kind. Fantastic. I agree. Andy, he's done work for Andy as well. So yeah, Leo is a gun for hire. I do not mind sharing my friend Leo. It would make me happy. And <laughs> Danielle. So thank you so much, everybody. Please come back every Tuesday from 9 to 10 p.m. to What's the Story with Maria? We love and appreciate you. And good night. Thank you. Good night. Ooh, I'm lagging. Bye. Wow.